Do you ever feel like you're never going to be happy? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to start on such a bleak note there. Let me try this one more time. Do you ever feel like no matter what you do, um, you'll never truly be happy? Okay, that, that, was still, <laughs> that was still kind of dark. Let me, has this ever happened to you? You're in grade 12, your final year of high school, and you have your eyes dead set on this one goal to, to get into university. When you do that, you'll finally be happy. You've been spending the last four years doing all you can to make yourself the best candidate possible. You've been, you've been getting the best grades you can. You've been going to all the extracurriculars. You've been putting on speaker events where you bring in people from the community. And you've been networking with your teachers so they'll hopefully write you a reference letter. Fingers crossed. So you take all of these experiences and you're using them so that you'll hopefully one day get into university. And when you do that, you'll finally be happy. For story's sake, let's call this the, the University of Big Cabinets, or UBC. And so you wrap up all your accomplishments in a nice little bow and you send it off to some anonymous admissions office. They're gonna decide your fate. I remember doing this when I was in grade 12, sitting at my like rickety IKEA desk, like trembling in my seat, waiting to hear what the results were. And it's such a fateful moment because I felt like so much was riding on that. You hit submit and you wait. It's a familiar story, you know, we're always told that happiness lies beyond our next greatest achievement. That it's, it's beyond the next thing that we're going to get, that we're going to be able to write down on our CV. A little disclaimer about happiness. I'm doing this because I don't want to assume that everyone experiences the same desires for happiness as success the way that I do in my culture. So in Vancouver, BC, where I've grown up, it's, it's a place that's dominated by individualism, which is the idea that we, as people, are all in charge of our own futures, our happinesses, our successes, and our identities, which is not necessarily the same in all cultures. Additionally, has anybody ever seen this on, in an old lady's house somewhere when you went to visit? Yeah, we're, we're what um, cultural psychologists call an indulgent culture, which means that we deeply care about happiness and freedom of speech and achieving our own self-actualization. And finally, we're future-oriented, which means we're always looking forward. We're always looking for change and we're forward-thinking. Take the title of this event, for example, Planting Your Future. So I say all of this just to let you know where I'm coming from culturally and ideologically. So you might be wondering, I've been spending the last five minutes telling you about this and you're sitting in your seats probably shaking from anticipation, right? Did we get in? Did we? Imagine how I felt waiting for weeks to hear back from this while all my friends were getting early acceptances and I was like, Am I going to end up homeless? <laughs> Congrats. You got in. You feel a sudden rush of elation, of excitement. You've never been happier. Everything that you've done up to today, you've worked up to this moment, you finally got in it. Success. Happiness. But over time, the feelings start to fade. The first day you walk onto campus and you're, you're all happy with a skip in your step and, and it's beautiful and you feel like you've succeeded, but after a while, going to school feels like a chore and you feel the same way about life as you did as an acne-infested high schooler. 
let me introduce you to the idea of the hedonic treadmill. The hedonic treadmill. Ooh, thank you. So the hedonic treadmill is the idea that no matter what we do, positive or negative, we return to the same baseline of happiness. This applies to grades, to career, to relationships, and to people who won millions of dollars in the lottery. Let me give you an example. So let's say that you move from a dirt shack to a mansion, right? And let's say that, that you prefer dirt shacks, I mean mansions over dirt shacks. And the hedonic treadmill says that after an initial burst of excitement, you might eventually fall back to the same baseline level of happiness that you experienced when you were over here. And it goes the other way. If you had moved from the mansion to the dirt shack, over time, your initial disappointment and anger might fade back into acceptance or neutrality. This also applies to things like shopping sprees, where a temporary burst of gratification fades back into a baseline of happiness that you had with to begin with. Just a note that I'll say that chronic stressors and systemic discrimination still affect people. But this is just to say that you might want to notice that your accomplishments and the happinesses that come with it seem to fade soon after they come, and that our long-term happiness levels seem stagnant. So why? Why does this happen? Sounds like kind of a sucky ordeal, right? So it's pretty simple, actually. Let's, let's take another example. Who's the dog that's, that's going to survive here? The one who is content with their house that's on fire? The one who doesn't strive for higher achievement? The one who doesn't want to solve and fix new problems? Or the one that's constantly looking for safer territory? It's the one on the left, or your right. The hedonic treadmill protects us from being comfortable in a harmful environment. Perhaps without it, we wouldn't have the same levels of innovation in culture and technology that we do today. How does it work? Forgive me for getting a little technical here. So basically, a hedonic treadmill operates through two mechanisms. So happy or positive emotions that were caused by the positive change decline over time, as well as we create higher goals for more positivity and happiness. And through these two pathways, over time, the positive change that we experienced fades back into this baseline of happiness that we originally had. Yes, we have innovations, we have, we have cultural revolutions from the hedonic treadmill, but it becomes a problem when, when nothing feels like it's ever enough. Like it feels like we're constantly ch chasing rainbows or the carrot that's dangling on the end of the stick. I know what you're probably thinking about now. Does, does life have no meaning? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Life is rife with meaning beyond the idea of happiness. Whether that be giving back to your communities, your family, the environment, or even achieving material success, the pursuit of happiness shouldn't be this addictive cycle to fill a psychological void. We are taught to chase goals, but not how to sustain ourselves when we achieve them. So let's talk about some possible methods to combat the hedonic treadmill. First one, gratitude. Who here has heard of gratitude? Right, we've all heard of it. And honestly, see 10,000 other TED Talks. I personally, I'm a little tired of the idea of gratitude and writing three things down I'm grateful for every night. The thing I'm most worried about getting down at the end of the night 
is pressing submit at 11.59 on Canvas and letting my head hit the pillow. So let's talk about some other strategies. Number one, give up. Not on life, but on a thing. So temporarily giving up something pleasurable, like chocolate, may aid in achieving happiness, according to a study by Elizabeth Dunn. Additionally, spending on others. Not only how much you earn, but how you spend your money can influence your happiness. This 2008 study suggested that spending more of your income predicted greater happiness than those assigned to spend money on themselves. And finally, variety. Variety is the spice of life. So incorporating more variety into the positive change that you experienced can help you buffer the effects of the hedonic treadmill and sustain that happiness boost that you experienced. Let's go back to that mansion example, right? After a few weeks, you're, you're getting concerned because um, took a look at Kendall Jenner's Instagram page and you don't have her entire cactus water fridge. So build some variety into your life in other ways if you, if you can't afford a cactus water fridge. Build that variety into your life so that you can sustain the happiness booth, boost from, from the mansion move. Finally, let's move on to my personal opinion. So I talked earlier about how these concepts of happiness as something that defines success is not universal, but cultural. And not everyone sees success the same way, and, and that's normal, that, that's good. Maybe constant happiness isn't even the goal. Maybe giving back on a greater level is the goal, or pushing yourself to pursue the next great invention is what brings your life meaning. But if constantly chasing goals to no gratification is how you feel you're living your life, I advise you to press the stop button and fall off the treadmill for a little while and reflect your own treadmills. Because even if you're not running, it doesn't mean that life still isn't going on. You can plant your future however you like. But when you do, will you be able to admire all that you've grown? Or will you be too busy looking at the greener grass on the other side? Thank you.